Here's a crazy stat. Rakan Midlane has a 100% win rate in professional League of Legends. Sort of. This is a kind of weird and interesting story that I'm very excited to talk to you guys about today, but first I have to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. If you're anything like me and have an affinity for the old days of League, you probably have some fond memories of older streamers using Opera as their browser. Well, it turns out Opera somewhat recently designed and released Opera GX, a browser built specifically for gamers. This browser allows you to customize everything from the wallpapers and widgets on your home screen to colors and accents in the browser itself. There's so much you can do here. It even has a feature that can force all sites you visit into dark mode, which holy moly, that's nice. Opera GX also has Twitch integration, giving you alerts whenever a super important streamer goes live and allows you to join their stream directly from your browser itself. There's also similar integration for Discord and most messaging platforms, all of which cuts down on unnecessary clutter on your taskbar. Maybe coolest of all though, this browser has a feature called GX Control, a series of settings that you can use to limit how much processing power your computer Computer devotes to your browser, so if you want to watch a stream and play League at the same time, you're not dealing with FPS drops. On top of all of this, there's also the GX Corner, a place where Opera gives manual curation and updates on free games, sales for popular titles, and breaking gaming news all in one easily accessible place. There are so many features here, and it's all free to use. If you want to check it out for yourself, feel free to use the link in the description down below, which supports the channel, and let me know in the comments what you use it for. Maybe you want to watch my video while playing some League without losing that sweet 60 FPS, Opera made a legitimately cool product here, so big shout out to them for the support. Okay, let's start off with an obvious question. How the hell does Rakan mid lane work? Rakan, of course, was added to League of Legends back in 2017 alongside Zaya on patch 7.8. This was the first time Riot had released multiple champions at once since 2010 when they added Pantheon and Gragas together. Releasing more than one champion on a single patch is clearly not something Riot has done a lot of, but in this case, it obviously made sense. In the League of Legends lore, Zaya and Rakan are partners in love, so in game, they're naturally meant to be played together down bot lane. When paired, they have various buffs and enhancements in their kits, like being able to recall together or have longer ranges on certain spells and abilities. They were pretty successful releases who saw a lot of play bot lane both in solo queue and the pro scene, but as time went on, some players started to view Rakan as a champion who was so good he was worth playing on his own. Rakan's kit wasn't absurdly good at any one play style, but what made him special was he could be played in multiple ways very effectively, sort of like a jack of all trades. He could succeed as an aggressive engager, somebody who's initiating team fights with taunts, knockups, and more, but he was also just as great when played passively too, as he had plenty of shields, heals, and escapes if he ever needed to be used in a more defensive way. This flexibility in his kit meant talented players could use him to great effect in pretty much all levels of the game, but the pro scene in particular really latched onto the champion. It took less than a year from Rakan release for him to start seeing frequent use in pro play. At Worlds 2017, Rakan was the third most played support with a 67% pick ban ratio over the course of the main event. To cap all of this off, that year's world champion, Samsung Galaxy, would choose Rakan as one of their five champions to get a skin themed after their triumph. Pro players clearly loved this champion, which might be why some of them began experimenting with him in untraditional ways starting off in 2018. Throughout that year's season, both high-rated solo queue stars and professional players began realizing that Rakan was so good, he could actually be played mid lane as a full AP assassin. Another really great YouTuber, Dong Hwap, already made a video about this, which I will link in the description down below if you want to learn more. But to summarize briefly how Rakan mid works, Rakan has really great AP ratios on pretty much all of his abilities. So if he stacks full AP over the course of a game, he can deal absurd damage to enemies with his offensive skills, while also giving massive shields and heals to his allies with his defensive stuff. Of course, one of the best ways to be able to afford stacking a full AP build is by playing a 
champion in one of the two solo lanes, either mid lane or top. Rakan, by all means, has the raw base stats to be able to survive one of those lanes, but he does have a bit of a problem. One of his abilities, his E Battle Dance, can only be used if an ally is nearby. This is what kind of basically forced him to be played bot lane as a support up until this point. However, some really talented players realized that if you're creative with your early game movement, Rakan can be played mid lane still, just as a sort of roaming god. If you take him down mid lane, Rakan actually has the potential to be one of the best roaming gank champions in all of League of Legends. He's almost played in the same sort of way you might see an Aurelian Soul or Katarina mid lane being used, going so far to prioritize roaming for kills more than farm. His quick moving dashes, coupled with a plethora of crowd control, makes him great for diving enemies under tower. Even before he's strong enough to dive someone, though, as early as level 2, he can start roaming around kind of as a support for his jungler. As long as he's placing a focus on roam, he'll still get the full use out of his kit, since there should always be allies pretty close nearby for him to use his E. As soon as he gets through that early laning phase, though, Rakan suddenly turns into a legit mid laner. Give him a few kills as well as a decent amount of farm, and by the time you hit late game, he will almost be indistinguishable from any other control style mage. He has the damage of a full burst character while also getting huge shields and heals to support allies. The only caveat here is this is one of those strategies that can only really work best in higher ratings since Rakan mid is pretty reliant on playing alongside his jungle and his teammates in the early game. He can't really work effectively if his jungler spends all game flaming him for picking Rakan mid, so this might not be something you want to try in iron four, but in higher rating, this is a legitimately good strategy that can succeed and in many ways already has. Just this past year in 2020, the solo queue one trick Assassin Rakan hit challenger on the EUNE servers and has been continuously succeeding with the build in solo queue, but this isn't just a solo queue strategy. We can go back to as early as 2018 and see pro players bringing Rakan mid lane out on the competitive stage. The first team brave enough to try Rakan mid was an LDL team in the Chinese development league called VC Gaming. They picked Rakan mid up against Sino Dragon in the Northern Division during the 2018 spring season, and you can see just from the champion picks what they were trying to do. Rakan mid is one of the best early game roamers in league, so why not pick him against Aurelian Soul, another champion famous for roaming? Theoretically, he could try to match A Soul's priority and roam alongside him, so no teammate ever gets too messed up from a mid lane gank. And for the first 20 minutes or so of this game, Rakan was able to do exactly that. A Soul might have been able to roam and pick up a few kills here or there, but Rakan was just as effective himself and helped VC get a very strong early lead. They maintained that lead for most of the match up until about the 25 minute mark when they started making a few late game macro mistakes that gave their opponents a way to climb back into the match. Sadly, things wouldn't quite go to plan from here onward as VC would then go on to lose the game, although it was absolutely not because of the Rakan pick. I should probably explain at this point, this is what I mean when I say Rakan kind of has a 100% win rate mid lane. He's only been picked three times mid in Premier events, which are top leagues across the globe and international competition, and of those three matches, he has a 100% win rate, getting victories in all of them. However, he has also been picked six times in secondary leagues, Academy and Challenger systems, where there he's currently sitting with three wins and three losses. This is obviously a bit sad in that it makes clickbaiting a YouTube video a bit harder, but it might actually be a blessing in disguise. Unlike some of the other off-meta videos we've made on this channel, this build was not something that just happened as a one-off strategy in one or two games throughout history. Recon Mid is something that has seen a lot of success to a point that people keep on picking him even up until today, but we'll get to that in a moment. What was particularly exciting about this LDL performance was, although Rakan mid lost here, he would actually be picked some 10 hours later on the opposite side of the world that very same day. In the Latin America South League, the CLS hosted in Chile, we would see a team named Dark Horse pick Rakan mid in the closing promotional series. Here, they were trying to avoid relegation and thought for whatever 
reason this important event was the best time for them to break out Rakan mid, their mid laner Sonata would first time the champion during group stage, turning what looked like a Zaya Rakan bot lane into a move that left the casters somewhat befuddled. Van a depender bastante igual. Eh, a ver, quiero pensar que Sonata va a cambiar con Haiha el campeón. ¿Sabes que no? Rakan mid, ¿sabes que no? Rakan mid por parte de Dark Horse, señoras y señores. Here in this first match, Sonata had a pretty average game, going only 2 5 and 6, but doing well enough to help Dark Horse pick up the win. Just a few days later, though, in that very same promotional series, he would pick Rakan mid again, this time going off. contra nadie, atención en la persecución, tiene ventaja la UC, pero aquí el varón, oh, Sonata lo que le pega a Kimi, atención con esto, eh. puede ser la vuelta a casa detrás de Sonata y está entonces la victoria de Dark Horse en ese combate cuidado porque Rakan se lleva el soporte, Sibir mata a Buffy, y en una buena contra y entrada de parte de Hazard que se iba para atrás y volvía, se quedan entonces con Samblas y en la persecución mi querido compañero gritalo conminho esto es un exterminio! Rakan Midlane is really fascinating to me since he has this unique trait that seemingly no other off-meta strategy has, most off-meta champions when played are very lonely picks, which what I mean by that is, for example, if one team decides to run Teemo top lane, as weird as that might be, the rest of the roster there will likely play the match out the way they normally would. Teemo doesn't really affect anything other than his own lane, and because of this, the only person who has to be prepared to deal with Teemo top lane is his lane opponent. If he's ready to face him, then that can shut the the entire strategy down. What makes Rakan mid lane especially interesting though is his off meta weirdness tends to breed more off meta weirdness. The next instance we'd see Rakan mid would be in the nation of South Korea, where their challenger league decided to try the strategy out for the first time. Here, the CK team ES Sharks would pick him against none other than Damwon Gaming, which I'm sure you can guess how that played out. Future world champions Damwon would basically wipe the floor with the ES Sharks, a murderous performance that might be the reason the VOD of this series appears to be deleted from the internet. But something worth noting about this game was Rakan wasn't just played mid lane, he was played alongside a Zaya jungle. And at least according to the scoreboard here, these two champions were the only ones remotely successful against Damwon. The next match we saw Rakan mid would be two weeks later in the Japanese Challenger League, which also featured a Zaya jungle, giving us some more insight into how this strategy worked. Here, the Akihabara and Count faced off against Master of Chicken Gaming and showed us a bit of a new twist to how you can use these champions. This wasn't really Rakan mid the way we had seen him before with his AP Assassin build, but Rather, this was a funnel strat. Funneling in League of Legends, of course, is a strategy where a team will pick a full support mid lane who runs around essentially duoed with a hyper carry jungler. That jungler will take CS from both the jungle and mid lane with the support kind of following them around and making it difficult for anyone to fight back since they likely have a numbers advantage. This is really most effective with Taric Master Yi, which I'm sure you have all had the unfortunate displeasure of running into in solo queue, but this can also work with other champions, and apparently Zaya and Rakan are two of those other characters. Even though these are two roles that neither champion was meant to be played in, theoretically the duo can work pretty well as a funnel. Rakan in mid lane has his fantastic roaming potential, supportive buffs, and crowd control that we already mentioned, while Zaya also has some pretty great pushing potential to get priority mid lane, allowing her to go farm jungle camps quickly and scale into the late game. In this particular match, the combo would work extraordinarily well as the Akihabara and Count were able to control almost the entire jungle. Not only did they get stuff like early scuttle crabs with little to no difficulty, but they also got some uncontested dragons, which the enemy team seemingly had no idea how to stop. Later on, Akihabara scaled with Zaya and Rakan getting great team fights, helping them to close out the match and eventually winning the game with a dominant final kill count of 16 to 3. At the time of making this video, this is sadly the last victory for Zaya jungle Rakan 
mid. It seems as though it was tried once more in the Taiwanese Challenger League a few weeks after this, but resulted in a loss there, where once again no VOD seems to exist. For what it's worth, in this game, Rakan had a nearly 100% kill participation and Zaya was one of the only positive players on the team, suggesting maybe it wasn't entirely their fault that this combo lost the game. But thankfully, that's not where this story ends, because the best part about Rakan mid is I don't think he's done yet. So far, everything I've shown you has taken place in 2018, the year following Rakan's release, which was a very successful year for the champion as a whole. By the end of 2018, he was not only succeeding to some degree as a mid laner, but had also become a top tier support again. That year at 2018 Worlds, he'd be played so much that it would result in him earning his second World Championship skin. Unfortunately, that resulted in him getting some pretty hefty nerfs at the end of the year. On patch 9.2, Rakan had many of his abilities scaled back pretty hard, which obviously not just impacted Rakan's support, but also hurt Rakan mid. Regardless, we would see him picked a few times from here on out. Just before the nerfs hit in late 2018, he was actually picked against Sonata and Dark Horse, that team that got the first two wins with the strategy. But this time, the Kaos Latin gamers would force Dark Horse to play against their favorite pocket pick, which turned into a pretty weird and hilarious game in retrospect. De color rojo, rojo, sangre el caballo negro oscuro vamos a ver si indomable el equipo de Dark Horse Cuidado. y atención porque Fix tiene problemas entra Rakan rápidamente para ganar un poco más de tiempo Buji adelantado Uy, atención con Tomnam forzando el destello ahí está el uno por uno de parte de Rakan esto le sirve un poquito más a Dark Horse Cuidado con esto, eh, porque se lo llevas real. Esto puede ser también, ahora sí le sirve a Tierwolf, le sirve ahora sí a KLG. This CLS match had not only Kaos running Rakan mid, but they were also playing with a Zaya AD carry and Kaisa jungle. It turned out to be a pretty huge stomp for Kaos as that Kaisa went off, getting a final scoreline of 16, 3, and 6. Rakan, of course, contributed to a lot of that with his supportive playstyle, getting near perfect kill participation himself, and leaving a pretty great send off for the champion and strategy before those nerfs brought him in line. We'd still see Rakan pick twice more in secondary leagues across the world ever since then in these past two years. In 2019, he was played in the EU Masters system where a Portuguese team used him to relatively good effect, snagging a win in their league. The last match though that featured a Rakan mid occurred in September of 2020, just a few months ago when he was picked in the Costa Rican league, getting a perfect KDA up against a Yon mid lane with a final scoreline of 5-0-5. We haven't seen anyone play Rakan mid since then on the professional stage, at least at the time of this recording, but I still think he has a chance to make a return. What I love so much about this strategy is Rakan mid kind of represents how off-meta builds can still survive today. Some of the biggest and most memorable off-meta moments in League's history occurred a long time ago, in seasons 1 through 3 in the early 2010s, which is something that a lot of people see as a pretty sad occurrence. I've seen plenty of comments on my YouTube video saying that you guys want me to make more videos about current things going on in modern League of Legends and give stories from today, but of course we don't see as many off-meta builds today. Pulling out weird stuff like AP Alistar mid lane used to be a really common occurrence, but it doesn't work nearly as well in the modern meta. Instead, League of Legends is now way more focused about technical mastery of champions and skills who have really complex kits. It's not so much about theory crafting weird builds. But the great thing about Rakan mid is he kind of proves to us off-meta champions aren't dead. And if anything, we're going to see more off-meta characters now that champions are getting tons of abilities packed into their kits. A common sentiment among the League of Legends player base is that champions nowadays have really overloaded kits. People complain about champion power creep, which is making older characters more irrelevant until they get their own champion rework because everyone has so many crazy abilities. And that's true, certainly to some extent, but there's an interesting hidden an upside to that design philosophy that Riot's been adhering to for a while. An overloaded kit oftentimes means a champion is good at more than one thing and might just be good in more than one role. This is something we've actually seen pretty frequently, both in new releases and champion reworks. I mean, look no further than Swain, a character who was originally meant to be a mid lane mage, maybe a top lane carry, is today played just as often bot 
bot lane, either in the AD carry position or as a support, for some sort of weird, interesting strategy that the player base just kind of invented. I mean, this strat has now become so commonplace, it's not even off meta anymore, but it serves as a great example of how community theory crafting can still bring creative strategies to League. Whether it's something as frequently seen as Swain bot lane or something as offbeat as Rakan mid, I think players are always going to be able to find a way to make creative builds and strategies work. We've definitely closed the door on the first era of theory crafting creativity, but a new door has absolutely opened, and both in solo queue and competitive play, I think that off meta builds still have a very bright and exciting future. Thank you very much for watching.